Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to be talking about a very important topic. This is, as far as we can tell, the single biggest mistake every artist makes throughout their learning journey. Yeah, this mistake sort of, there will always be a ceiling cap to the skill you can reach if you don't correct this. And it's something Henning and I have both done. It's something that you will continue to do some and some points throughout your career, but there is an easy fix for it. So let's get into it. So what we're talking about in this video is basics versus fundamentals. This sounds like a topic which is about grammar, where you're just talking about the word basics versus fundamentals. The reason we're talking about it is because People assume that this is the same thing. We keep talking about we're going back to basics, we're going back to fundamentals. But this couldn't be further from the truth. We are not going back to basics or back to fundamentals. They're completely separate. They're completely separate skill sets. And it's really important that we define what these are so that you can really optimize your learning journey. Yeah, essentially, these two words are what we've coined the concepts that we'll be talking about. And like in broad terms, a basic skill, the way that we're defining it, is a skill that you can master. It's a finite skill. It's you opening up a piece of software, learning where all the buttons and what all the menu items do, or whether it's you pick up a camera and you get familiar and learn what all the buttons on a camera do and what every little menu setting does. Then there's the fundamentals. Fundamentals is a skill that you can essentially never master. It's a limitless ceiling. It's something like color theory. It's cinematography. It's the fundamentals of figure drawing. Like gaining a true understanding of these concepts, that is what we're defining as fundamentals. This is something we've seen essentially every single artist struggle with. Mort and I, we come from a 3D background where we've been learning very technical software. And you might come from a completely different background, but the skill set and the path is going to be very much the same, where you start to learn the software and you get better and better and better. Your art improves as you get better, as you learn more features in the, in the software, or maybe it's a camera you're using. Regardless of what it is, the medium you're using, you're getting a better understanding of how it works. And your art gets better linearly with how better, how much better your software skills becomes. But then you reach a point where you get feedback on something that you don't understand. Suddenly it's not about, oh, just enable this feature and just duplicate the layer and do this weird trick. The feature or the feedback you're getting is you don't know how to compose the image. <laughs> and you start to realize that your issues have nothing to do with the software. Yeah, a, an example of this was when I was first getting into digital painting, I had never really drawn much in my life. You know, I'd sketched on paper when I was a kid, but nothing really more than that. So I started getting into to digital painting. And I mean, at that point I'd been using Photoshop for, I don't know, five, eight years, I think. I was very familiar with Photoshop. The buttons, like we talked about the UI, I could, I could find pretty much anything and I could follow any tutorial. Getting started on painting, and I remember this clearly. I followed a tutorial by an artist, Richard Anderson, a concept artist. And it's, I think it was called like the Forest Horseman or something, where there's a guy on a horse and like this really strong composition with a log and like trees pointing towards him. And I showed it to a friend of mine. And at this point, I really didn't have a grasp of any kinds of fundamentals, just, just the basics. And he told me that oh, it's really good painting and, and I love the composition in this image. I had no idea what he was talking about. I just said, thank you and, and moved on. And it wasn't until years later when I started digging into the concepts of color theory and composition, lighting, mood, that I really started to understand why it was he complimented me. He wasn't complimenting me. I had just replicated what Richard Anderson had done, had done. but it wasn't really anything to do with my skills at that point which is kind of interesting. We both went into this trap of learning learning the basics. I had a similar story where I was doing a 3D model and I was blocking it out and the textures were looking nice and all that, but I couldn't figure out the composition of it. <laughs> this is where I was, I was aware that composition was a thing. I just had no tools on how to do it. 
and this was this was right before we went to we went to school. This is where Morton and I met at an, the animation workshop, and that focused heavily on the fundamentals. But I didn't know any of it. If I had progressed on on the path I was on, I would have still I would have known every single button of my 3D software, <laughs> and I wouldn't have known if my composition would have still remained the same. Maybe I would have had less noise in the render, and the render would have been faster. But by only focusing on the basics you are only getting to the same result faster. Yeah, I think it's important for us to also mention that when we say basics, we're not talking, we're not necessarily talking about something simple. Like you can have, as, as strange as it, sound, as it sounds, advanced basics. If, if we take programming as an, as an example, right? The basics of programming are the same for or like they change depending on the language. It would be like the specific syntax of one language, which variables to use. How do I combine all of this? You can read an encyclopedia of everything when you're programming in Python, for example. I know every single thing you can write in Python, but the fundamentals of programming go deeper than that. That is learning to think like a programmer, problem solving, the different ways you can solve like programmatically programmatic issues like what is the most efficient way to loop through these things there isn't just one way to do it there are multiple ways to do it and the more of a fundamental understanding you gain of a subject like that the better faster and more efficient you become so what are some actual differences between them like one of the one of the bigger ones when it comes to basics versus fundamentals is that basics are basics change over time while fundamentals are timeless concepts. Your understanding of color theory in the 1500s are still valid today, but your understanding of software from 1999 are absolutely not valid today. It's just, it's so important that you, you think about these as timeless concepts. Yeah, where what we've talked a lot about, like trying to trying to dissect this topic before recording this video was... I mean, it was a very philosophical discussion of what are these things. Uh, one of the things we talked about was, as we mentioned, these are names we've given to these two concepts. You need to develop an understanding of the concepts. We could call it red and blue. We could call it lamp and wall or basics and fundamentals. It's two different concepts within learning. You can't, you can't have one without the other. Like you can't only understand fundamentals. Like if you only understood the fundamentals of, let's say you're a digital artist, right? You want to paint or something like that, or a traditional artist. If you only understand the fundamentals of color, color mixing, um, color temperature, composition, lighting, so on, so on. But you don't have any basics. The basics mean that you won't really know how to pick up a brush and know what to do with it. Like if you're, if you're painting with gouache or if you're painting with watercolor, fundamentals kind of stay the same. There are nuances in there, but if you don't have the basic skills to actually paint, if you haven't trained your hand-eye coordination yet, the fundamentals don't mean anything and, and vice versa. It's not about which one is the most important. They're both important. It's about the balance of it. Mm -hmm. And it's about learning the basics to a certain point where you're comfortable with the software or the technique and then it's about focusing on the deeper fundamentals as you go along one of the ways of figuring out if it's an actual basic or fundamental skill as well is is asking if it's a how or if it's a why this is something we have all the time we're talking about 3d which yeah. again is our background which is like um, how do i add a cube well you click on the cube <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you you go into like okay how do I add a light to it or you click on the light okay so now you can add a light to the cube but then you're like why did I add the light to the cube there well it's because you want to you want to get a certain mood across maybe you want it to feel scary why does darkness feel scary mm -hmm. well let's go into if you you know stuck in a forest two thousand years ago and it's pitch black well why is that scary. Well, because there might be something hiding there. Well, why is that scary? Well, because it can hurt you. And now you're going into like into topics like biology, psychology, history, anthropology, all these kind of things where this is where you're getting into that basics is finite. Yeah. You have a finite amount of ways of doing a task. There is there is a finite, finite amount of ways of adding the cube. You can have three ways of doing it. <laughs> 
But when it comes to the fundamental of why you're lighting it in a certain way, you can literally write like all the books in the Oxford library to get to the bottom of this and you're still not going to be satisfied. Of course you shouldn't, <laughs> but you could. It really goes deep. So it's how, which is basic, and why, which is a fundamental. Yeah, the fundamentals are interesting because I think for anyone starting out in especially a creative field, most tutorials that you follow or find online or whatever it might be, tend to be focusing on basics. Everything you learn in school tends to be focusing on basics. It's, I think it's just a societal thing. We have, we have taught, or we're, we're being taught that basics is what we need in, in order to get ahead. So we teach basics, we seek out basics, which is also why when you're getting started with the software, you've just sort of learned that, okay, I just need to know this software and then I'll be great. But no one really teaches fundamentals that much. I mean, obviously you find amazing tutorials by amazing artists or photographers or videographers, whatever it might be that actually teach the fundamentals. But I think a lot of people aren't really aware that there's a separation there. So once they start getting into, let's say something like figure sculpting, anatomy, right? The basics of anatomy would be you read through the encyclopedia for, for anatomy and you know every single muscle by name, every single bone, everything there is to know about anatomy. You know how to do it. But if you wanted to do a sculpture, you would have no idea where to start. Like no idea about the form, no idea how to translate your reference into, into the clay, no idea about gesture, no idea about the shape. These are all concepts that on the fundamental side, at least in my opinion, can take a lot longer to learn. You can never truly master it if it's a fundamental skill. Like we said, there's like a limitless ceiling. So you'll never master it. You can get closer and closer to something. But I think because fundamentals are so subjective, just because you learn how to do figure sculpting really well and you can realistically replicate the human figure, someone else might look at that piece and say, well, I don't really like it. I was like, why is that? Well, because I'm more into stylized interpretations. And because you haven't really explored the fundamentals of the stylized uh, sculptures, then you're not very good at that yet. One, one thing we see as well is that schools do not teach fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Schools teach basics forever. Like if you've got attended any school at any portion of your life, you basically only learned the basics. An example of this is... Let's say you have to you have to write an essay, you have to write a book, something like that. Uh, but you you have problems with words. You actually have problems with like formulate or like writing the correct word. Maybe you have dyslexia. You have something like that. But like now you would get a terrible grade because you're you you're not good at the basics. You're not actually good at getting the pure words down in the correct way. But you can be a fantastic writer. You can have a writer who has ext extreme version of dyslexia. Yeah. Like, you know they could use like like a speech to text today. And that wouldn't be a problem at all because the basics of writing would be getting the words right. We have software for that. It's, it's using a text processor like Word and, you know, having like a fancy MacBook and a Starbucks, you know, all <laughs> these kind of things. But the fundamentals of it is story structure. It's creating appealing character, creating worlds which feel alive. Like you can, you can do that. But if you're in school and you make the best world there is, it feels so alive with so much richness. Uh, but you have spelling mistakes in every single word, you get trashed. Yeah, it's actually an interesting point. It reminded me of my uh, my mom. She currently finished... My mom loves writing. She loves writing. She's done it, I guess, all her life. But she told me recently that in terms of grammar, she is... I mean, she's terrible. She doesn't know anything about grammar. But she recently was a part of a a, a project where I think it was like a collective of 20 people and they would write stories about a, a certain subject. And, you know, they take her part of the story and then they send it to an editor. She describes her experiences and, and I haven't, you know, they, they might be very like emotive and, and invoke certain feelings, but that doesn't mean that just because the grammar isn't there that you don't understand the feelings she's trying to get across. So you can still be with an amazing writer, even of you don't really understand the basics of grammar that way. Yeah, or you have a problem with it, like yeah. for whatever reason it can be. 
it, it really just boils down why like how, how important the pure fundamentals are because let's say that you you have you have an essay and it gets like a 10 out of 10 because it has perfect grammar and perfect spelling and all that but you have a and but the, the story is boring <laughs> but on the other hand you have a story which is beautiful but tons of errors fix all the errors you have a beautiful story yeah the other one is already perfect but it's terrible story like it the fundamentals just isn't there in that story making sure that your fundamentals are strong i definitely believe makes you more hireable and more versatile as an artist compared to someone who just knows the basics yeah we've seen this all the time when we worked in in film for people who are new to our channel we worked in in the film industry in london for some years and that's a that's a skill which is highly technical yeah. but it's it's highly technical but it's like tech technical stuff hiding over like deep deep fundamentals you know what we were doing we were doing creature sculpting and for that there are a lot of technical things like you need strong basics for that you need to know retopology and all the technical fancy things but below that you need excellent understanding of shape and form so we saw a lot of people there who they They've been coming up through a system, maybe, you know, through a runner and the junior modeler, which is very reference based. And then they've been promoted all the way across and they were in a very high position, but they never really had to confront their own like insecurities as an artist. So the moment there was a job which came in, which required like you to concept something up and think, think outside the box. Yeah. And sculpt proper shapes or yeah. something. And it wasn't just a reference, replicate the reference, but you had to actually make good shapes. It was like they were back to like a like a university student because they never had to do that. But the moment they had really strong technical things, a support network around them, they were fantastic. Yeah. And this is where they get scared because now they saw a lot of juniors coming out of school who had excellent fundamentals. The juniors, they were they were struggling with the basics. I mean, like in terms of just there's so many there were so many technical things in the business. So they 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 had a bit of a hard time with some of them, but they were so scared of them because they could sculpt so well. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to learn the technical things in, in CG and the pipeline than there is to learn the pure fundamentals of it. I mean, you see that with something like traditional painters that are keeping up to date with technology. Like the, the really accomplished painters, like let's pretend like the Hudson River School painters, for example, existed today. And... I mean, their fundamentals and their basics were off the chart. Google some of their paintings. You'll see what I'm talking about. If they were to pick up Photoshop or any other digital painting software, right? They would struggle in the beginning with figuring out the brushes, getting used to a new basic skill, which would be, okay, if things move a little bit differently, I have a tablet that interprets my, my input. But because they have that whole framework around them that are their fundamentals, they will be able to pick that up like this. We saw that with when we were learning 3D. You know, that was, uh, we've been learning 3D for many, many years. Uh, I think for the past 15 years or yeah, something like that. Yeah, sure on that. And we started out with 2D Studio Max, Moto, Maya, ZBrush. So we've been developing our basic 3D skills through these softwares for many, many years, but also our fundamentals, which meant that recently we picked up Blender, I don't know, was that like six months ago? Like a year ago. Oh, it's a year ago, not six months ago. <laughs> Who knows about time in these times? Time. But it meant that when we picked up Blender, a year ago apparently, I mean, we were able to pick it up fairly well. I would say within a month, we were fairly comfortable. And then over the next year, obviously, we've become more and more comfortable. But that's because of the fundamental knowledge of 3D. Like knowing how to create a cube in Maya or Max or whatever. We know that function exists in Blender, so we just need to search for it. We know kind of where to look. It's the same thing with a traditional painter transitioning over to digital. Yeah, the way the way I was kind of thinking about it when I was learning a new software like Blender, you know, we've been learning doing this a few times. So there is there is kind of like a method to the madness. It's kind of like you you have like a, a workshop, you know, where everything is, you know, understand how all of it works. And then somebody comes into your workshop, they take all your tools, they throw them around <laughs> and now you just kind of have to pick them up or to replace them with like slightly different tools yeah. for you it doesn't matter the hammer it, it it's like now green and it like you have to hit it twice instead of once so there are there's like a quirk to the specific hammer but it but it's still fundamentally the same task you're doing 
that was us going from Maya to Blender, where we we knew we knew where we knew what all the tools had to do. We knew that the extrude tool had to live somewhere. We knew that it was going to be polygon based. We knew that you know you had to navigate the viewport. We also had an interesting example, like prepping for this video, where we're talking about is a skill a basic or a fundamental within three D, and it's like if let's say you have a person who's never touched 3D before and you were to teach him you were to teach him software called Maya and they're navigating in Maya. Now they are, there are two concepts here. First it's the being aware of 3D space. You know, that's a tricky one in the beginning. You have to actually be aware of how it works. The second one is how do you navigate this skill? So one of them is a basic, one of them is a fundamental. You move into another software, you move into Blender, the person now has no idea how to navigate. They, they actually don't know. They don't know the, the, the hotkeys or the mouse clicks that they need to actually navigate or move 3D objects anymore. They are aware of the concept of 3D space, which means the moment you were to teach them how to navigate in 3D space, they are now up to, up to speed on how to use it, which yeah. means that one of them is a basic and one of them is, the fundam is a fundamental. The concept of 3D space is a fundamental. That doesn't change between software. Like all the software will have the same fundamentals in that regard but they have different ways of interacting with them. Like one thing you mentioned, for example, was your dad when he got into photography. Yeah. Like, I think his dad takes this many pictures <laughs> every day. Um, very prolific <laughs> photographer. And in the beginning, like everyone just starting out, you get into what you can see and feel and touch. You know, it's like, okay, here's my camera. I'm gonna go through every single menu. Okay, I know every single, every single thing, I know what every single button does. And you just point and you click your camera. That doesn't mean your, your picture is going to turn out any good. But then once you're past that point, because like at that point, there will always be a cap. And that's the problem with basics. Your pictures will never really get any better if you only know the basics. Then cue in his son and he goes like, hey, dad, let me teach you some fundamentals of not just necessarily photography, but composition and 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 lighting and slowly those concepts start to you know run around in your brain and you slowly start to grasp grasp some of them and slowly that sort of translates into i guess more and more skills and, and your photography starts to get better i don't know a thing about photography like i don't know how cameras work <laughs> i have like a general sense of it but i you know, I, I couldn't teach a photography class. So when I was feedbacking his his photos, I just I was just drawing like thumbnails on post-it notes and, and and simplifying stuff into well, into like the pure fundamentals into shape and all that. But it was also interesting. This is kind of like a segue into the next one, which is it was also introduction into the basics because he was grading JPEGs. And that is a big no-no. <laughs> Don't grade your JPEGs. So it was like a lot of you do th uh, post-it thumbs just to like improve the composition, but then also you should grade the raw. And now it, it, his photos improved dramatically just from uh, that as well, yeah. which leads it into, into the last category here, which is basics are still essential. Yeah. It's really not a, oh, but now should I only focus on the fundamentals? No, you need, you need a balance of it. Otherwise, you have no idea how to interact with your tool. Yeah, you could be super knowledgeable spiritually, you understand everything and you are enlightened, but you can't actually do anything actionable with those with that knowledge. I think there's also like an interesting one, just like the word like spiritual, because this is something we, we talked a bit, bit about before we, we, we recorded, where basics is very, is very tangible. Yeah. Like it's very clear what it is. This tool has six ways of doing it. It's, but fundamentals is very philosophical. Mm -hmm. And this is where I see when, I see this a lot when artists get more and more advanced into their field, they become a lot more philosophical in general. Yeah. It's more about why do I do, do it the way I do it? Yeah, it's like you can't, when you're talking about invo invoking emotions through a piece of art that you've created, you're not emo evoking those emotions through the basic skill in the 3D software or in, in Photoshop or whatever it is. I mean, this extends to everything, whether you're uh, like you design logos, you design cars, you, you're a programmer, even like if you're an engineer, you're a machinist, whatever it may be, these concepts sort of like transcend, I think, all fields. Obviously, we're talking about it from an artist perspective because that's what we know. But I do believe that this is something that everyone can really benefit from. 
Yeah, well, we went, we went to art school. Our teacher, he, he kept pushing one concept all the time. And that was the most important thing in art is what it makes you feel or how it makes you feel. And that sounds weird in the beginning. It yeah. sounds a little bit like art school BS. <laughs> but that's because he's cutting straight to the chase. He's just cutting straight to the fundamentals. It's not about what brush you use and all that. And if you approach it from it's what it makes you feel, then all your choices, they kind of go towards one thing. Yeah. Now get your basics out of the way and then make all your creative choices go towards this deeper fundamental thing. And the more you do art, the more you realize that you can simplify and simplify down into the different fields or into 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 like almost like truth statements <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you were to write the basics for background painting and and sculpting and ZBrush, you would kind of get into some of the same ones. It's about good shape, you know, making sure that the details are not just scattered all across the focus on a simple area, good gesture in it, you're leading the eye. And you can apply these rules to all like logo design, yeah. like background painting, ZBrush sculpting, photography. You're kind of going back to like, a, like truth statements. Yeah. So I guess to, to wrap everything up, the basics of uh, basics and fundamentals. <laughs> basics and fundamentals, right? You have basics, which is, I guess, the primary skill that everyone kind of starts out with. It has a finite cap. There is a way to master basic skills. Basic skills don't necessarily need to be easy. They can be very advanced. But basic skills are skills that will have a limit. And if you only focus on basic skills, there will be a cap both career-wise, but also skill-wise, emotion-wise, what you'll be able to create with your pieces, whether it be photography, logo design, videos, and so on. There is a, there is a skill cap, basically. When you have fundamentals, on the other hand, fundamentals are limitless. You need the basics to complement the fundamentals because you need to be able to create something that evokes something. Fundamentals are infinite, Fundamentals can never really be mastered. They are very subjective. There's something that your understanding or my understanding of a certain fundamental skill, let's say composition, is different from Henning's. It's, it's different from yours. And, and that's what makes it tricky. And by focusing on fundamentals, you will improve your art significantly. You will be ready for the change which happens in industry, whether you get fancy machine learning tools mm. or whatever it might be, you will be ready to weather the storm of, of time. If you only have basic skills, you are in much more danger of losing your job versus if you have basic and fundamental skills. Because the fundamental skills, like we said, kind of transcend time. Bernini sculptures from the 15th century, 1500s, I don't know, is like they still look good today. They looked good back then. They will look good in a thousand years because there are good fundamentals. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And we also, I believe, we have a playlist about fundamental skills as well. We do. Where we talk a lot <laughs> about like observation and like core color theory and all that. And those are skills that are not going to be obsolete by a new patch of Maya coming out. No. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks guys.